Welcome to the city of Cologne or Köln in German. Now this is the fourth largest city in the country and it is mostly famous for carnival and its big dark gothic cathedral. But what else is there to see in Cologne? Well that's what I'm here to find out. We are now at the mighty River Rhine here and this has been historically one of the most important rivers in Germany. It has been a trade network for many centuries and yeah we are on the southern edge of the old town. So the old town is over there in the distance and I first wanted to show you a few cool modern buildings here in Cologne. So this right here is the old port area of Cologne and as you can see it has been really nicely redeveloped and it has this beautiful promenade here and then over there we have have the famous crane houses. So these crane houses over there, they were built between 2008 and 2010 and they are kind of the crown jewel of this redevelopment of the port here. And there are three of them, 60 meters high, and they have this really quirky architecture and they kind of look like cranes. And here we have some of the old canals, but as you can see, this is mostly a business center now. You have Microsoft over there and then pleasure boats, so no more freighters coming into this canal. And also these are the old warehouses, but they have been turned into apartments and commercial space. Now, Cologne has thousands of years of history. It was actually founded in 50 AD during the times of the Roman Empire. And then in the Middle Ages, it was always the seat of the Catholic Church. So it was always a very important city because it is located on the Rhine River and it had the Catholic Church. And we're gonna see the main cathedral later. But yeah, Köln has been a major city for centuries. And yeah, I actually really like this area because it is very modern, but then you have these old warehouse type buildings. So it's a nice contrast. Right, we are now gonna leave this port area here and head to the old town. Now I say old town, but unfortunately there isn't much of an old town left here because as you might have guessed, between 1940 and 1945, this city was blown to smithereens and bombed to the ground during the World War II raids. So yeah, it was one of the most heavily damaged cities in all of Germany. But yeah, there are still some places left to see and we're gonna go check those out. Today is Sunday and the time now is around noon and you can see that the promenade on the Rhine River here is getting busier and busier. And this right here is the famous Heumarkt or Haymarket in English. And yeah, this is one of the main squares in Cologne. And as you can see, you've got some markets here. And during Carnival, this is where it's all happening. So Carnival is happening in the entire old town, but this is one of the main stages that they have. And yeah, it is absolutely buzzing at that time. Now Carnival actually happens twice every year in Cologne on the 11th of November and then in February. So yeah, if you want to experience the proper carnival culture here, you have to come either on the 11th of November or in February. There are several different dates in February where the main events are happening. But yeah, carnival is one of the main traditions here in Cologne and it is one of the biggest carnivals in Europe. Now this old town right here in Cologne was completely bombed out during the Second World War and that's why not much is left but some very historic structures are actually left. So here you can see some of the traditional cobblestone streets and you have breweries everywhere because of course Cologne is also famous for beer. So if you are in Köln, you absolutely have to drink the local beer because it's kind of a symbol of pride here. But yeah, there are many different types of Kölsch. There is the Gaffelkölsch and then the Frühkölsch and the Reisdorfkölsch. You can see a bottle over there and now you might think that the person who left that bottle over there is littering but he or she is not. If you have never been to Germany you might not know this but there is a deposit on bottles. So basically if you leave a bottle somewhere some homeless person can pick it up and then bring it to the supermarket and get some money in return. That's why people leave their empty bottles next to the trash can, not in the trash can, so that somebody can take it. It's basically a donation. 
And this right here is the Great St. Martin Church, which is actually one of the oldest churches here in Köln. And it was built in the 12th and 13th centuries and almost completely destroyed in World War II. But it has been rebuilt and renovated. And yeah, it is not the most famous church here, but it is much older than the Köln Cathedral, which is the most well-known church here in Cologne. So that was the Great St. Martin Church. And yeah, it has this Romanesque architecture, so it is very barren inside, not as much decoration as some other Catholic churches. And there are also some Roman ruins in this complex, but they weren't accessible right now. Anyways, we're gonna see another church later, which will be a bit more impressive. And now we are on Hohe Straße, High Street, which is the main shopping street here in Cologne. And I am not sure if you can see this, but everything is closed right now. That is because it is Sunday and we are in Germany. So on Sundays, shops close here. Supermarkets as well, but museums and restaurants and then some small corner stores are open on Sundays. So it's not like you're gonna starve. But yeah, you cannot do any shopping here. We are now back on the river promenade here. And yeah, it is absolutely teeming with people now. And I wanna go get some food. There is some construction going on here. But yeah, I have been to Cologne many times in the past. So I know the city quite well. And I also know where to get some good local food. So that's where I'm heading now. I went to a place called Ex-Vertretung, which means ex-representation. It is a Cologne institution, even though it is quite touristy and prices are relatively high. The food, however, is top-notch. I went for a specialty dish called Himmel und Ed, which means sky and earth in the local dialect. It's a traditional blood sausage with potato salad, caramelized onions and mashed apples. The mix of different flavors creates a unique taste. This wouldn't be to everyone's liking, but I really enjoyed it. And it went down super well with an ice cold Kölsch beer. Now I should mention that there won't be any hotel room tour in this video because I am staying with friends a bit outside of the city's main core but you can find hotels, hostels and Airbnbs for pretty much any price and preference here. I would say that it is pretty average in terms of pricing compared to the rest of Germany. It is not super cheap but not super expensive either. Now here we have another very interesting structure. This is what is called the Heinzelmenschen fountain and yeah, these little guys, they are called Heinzelmenschen. The English translation would be Gnome, but there is no translation really. But yeah, these little guys, they used to work in the streets of Cologne for the people of Cologne so that the people didn't have to do any work. And they used to do all that work at night. And then one day, a tailor's wife actually wanted to see them because the people had never seen them. And after she saw them, they stopped working. That is the legend of the so-called Heinzelmenschen. And then here we have the Heinzelmenschen fountain. The next spot on our tour is of course the Kölner Dom, Cologne Cathedral. Now this is no ordinary church. Construction began in 1248, but it was only completed in 1880. As such, it took over 600 years to build. The Gothic style is highly recognizable and the dom is the symbol of Cologne. It is the tallest twin spire church in the world and the second tallest church in Europe after Ulm Minster in Bavaria. It is also Germany's most visited landmark and attracts 20,000 tourists per day. Entrance is free and the interior is stunning as well. Among other places, it holds the Shrine of the Three Kings, a major pilgrimage site. Now let's address the elephant in the room. This entire city was flattened by bombs in World War II. Why is this cathedral still standing? Well, it was bombed 14 times and it did suffer heavy damage, but it never collapsed and its facade remained mostly intact. That is why in the post-war period, Cologne Cathedral became a major symbol for the German economic miracle. In 1996, it was added to the register of UNESCO World Heritage Buildings. just went inside the cathedral there and yeah this is a stunning building the sheer size of it but also the mosaics and the details and then the tombs and you have some archaeological sites in the basement as well and you can go up to the tower but to be honest there is no point really because the city view without the cathedral in it isn't really that great and here we have another very iconic landmark this is the Hohenzollern bridge 
and you know the story by now. This was destroyed in World War II, so the first bridge that stood here was built in 1907, but the bridge that you see now is from 1945. So it was rebuilt and it is now a train bridge and a pedestrian bridge. And it is actually famous for these padlocks right here. So couples can put a lock here, Sabrina and Chris for example, symbolizing their love. We are now back on the River Rhine here, the Hohenzollern Bridge is behind me over there. And yeah, I am signing off from here. Cologne is a lovely city to visit, definitely include it on your Germany itinerary. And yeah, I didn't have much time here. I am basically just spending a few days in Germany in between bigger trips. But yeah, I still have another destination to cover and I am actually gonna move on later tonight. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.